transfer transformation. So this is a very, very powerful transformation. Let's see this. So, then I, I'll show you different. So let's use this one. So one, when I'm using the source as a oracle table, I can do a lot of things in my source qualifier. So first thing is I can, if I go to the source qualifier properties, I can write a filter here itself. So I don't have to go, I don't have to add another filter transformation. So that means if I write something like this, is equal to 30. Let's see this, okay. This is one of the other mappings which we created earlier. So uh, this is my M EMPDB. No, what we don't need an extra filter transformation. Here what I'm showing you is if you want to filter your source records, instead of using another filter transformation, you can use the filter in the source qualifier itself. But this is possible only when your source is a database. You cannot write a filter if your source is a file. Okay, see? I got only six records. So this is one important thing. And another thing is, this is very, very interesting. So let's say I don't want to put the filter here. Another thing this is, it says SQL query. So what does that mean is, if I go to SQL query and do a generate SQL, this is the SQL which Informatica will fire when it is running this mapping. So what I'm going to do is I will remove this one and I will write my own custom SQL is equal to 50. I have changed the filter to 50, now 45 records are getting. So, one thing here to understand is if you want to write your custom SQL, you can write anything here, like group by something, order by. So you can write your own custom SQL here. So performance wise this is better. Now I will show you a few other things. Let's say I want to use the departments and do want to do a join here. So now since since the at the database level departments and employees have a primary key foreign key relationship that's why you see this arrow right now whatever I'm showing is this is possible only when at the employ uh, at the database level if you have a primary key and foreign key relationship so what I'm going to do is I will use only one source qualifier and I am department ID and department name. I'll take the department name here and connect the department name here. 
Now, if you go to my source qualifier, and if you see here, properties, if you go here, if you do a generate SQL, you will see this thing. Let's delete manager ID and all because that's not required at this point. So what I'm, I'm sorry. So what exactly I'm doing here? What exactly I'm doing here is I am writing my own SQL, even the joining conditions and everything. So. If I have underlying in tables in the database level, if the tables have a primary key foreign key relationship defined, then I can use a single source qualifier to join them and extract the data instead of using a joiner transformation. Performance wise, this is much better because Informatica will fire exactly this query. If you want to see, I can show you. So I'll write Control S. And go here. Refresh mapping. In the query, you will see department in this query. Control S. Now see, it has extracted 106 records and loaded 106 records. If I go to session log, if I want to see the session log, you will see here SQL instance is this is the query which Informatica has actually fired. Any questions for me? Okay, can you repeat the performance point? Yes, performance wise this is much better than uh, using a uh, joiner transformation because it will fire that single query and read the records instead of reading both the sources and doing the join. So performance wise it's better if you can write a SQL, custom SQL here. Now, so this is one thing. Now let's think of this. Many of the times this is possible that the customer will not tell you what are your sources. What they will do is they have a very big complex query. Okay, maybe like 100 lines complex query where it is joining 1,000, like maybe 50, 60 columns and then joining at least 15, 20 tables and creating a select statement. So what customer want you to do is when you run that query, that whatever is the result set of that specific query. Okay, so when I run that query, I get 60 columns with data. Customer want you to use that data set as a source. So in that kind of scenario, you do not know oh, what are your sources. Okay. So if somebody gives a SQL, so somebody, let's think of this, somebody has given you this specific SQL. Let's take this SQL, okay. Somebody has given me this SQL and I told me that I create a source based on this SQL. So how to do that? This is very important and this is some many of the times this is what happens. So what I'm going to do is I, I will create a new source, okay, because I don't know what are the tables involved. So I will just create a new source, create what type it is. I know the database, so it's Oracle. And I give 
I can give any name. So I, I just gave a name as EMP underscore DEPT. So think of this. At this point of time, I do not have any, any table in my database whose name is EMP underscore DEPT. And, but I am creating a structure of such kind of table, okay? Now columns. How do I know what are the columns will be there in this table? I will go take the SQL, whatever is given to me. I will just take the SQL. And whatever columns in there in my select, I'll create only those columns. So I have one column as employee underscore ID. I have another column as first name. I have another column as last name. So maybe this query is not that, like it's a very simple query, so you will, maybe for this one it doesn't make sense, but if it's a very, very complex query, so this is how I do is I will create the column names, okay. Now what I'm going to do is, let's say I'll create another Okay, so what I'll do is I'll remove this one. I have one more source which is called employee underscore DPT. And I'll go to properties and custom SQL and I will just paste this query. So this is that complex query which is provided by the client. I'll just paste it here.
see 106 rows read. Now if I go to my target, this is my file generated, see. So the whole idea is, I'm repeating one more time, if I, many other times what happens is a client, they have a query which they are running for like for the last five years to get some data. So some, this query was built over period and this is a very, very complex query. So they don't want you to like do a research on the query and create like four to four mappings to generate that data. What they want is you run this query, whatever is the data set, that is my source. Now, that will be your source and after that you process my data as per the requirement. So in this kind of scenario, what you will do is you will create a source with the columns in the select and then you will use that queries in the so SQL override. This is called SQL override, okay? You will write it here. Um, other important properties here is you, you, if you want to do a distinct select, or if you want to select distinct records, you can write click here or you can write select distinct here itself. Important one is pre-SQL and post-SQL. Now let's say I have another SQL which I want to run even before Informatica runs this custom SQL or even before Informatica reads data from my table. So let's say if I go to this one, there also even, even before Informatica runs reads data from, from these two tables, employees and departments, I have a query which I want to run. Okay. So here here you don't see the pre-SQL, post-SQL because it's joining. Okay. So let me go back to my own query again. So if, if, I, if I want to write a pre-SQL, so usually what I do, usually many other times what kind of SQLs are written here is, let's say I want to capture the time when this data, this uh, Informatica is starting reading the data. Maybe like I have a performance issue and then I, do, I want to capture the total time spent in reading the data. So I will write a pre-SQL where I will write that insert into some audit table the system date, date time and similarly I will have another SQL which is post-SQL which will be fired immediately once the reading of data is complete. So once Informatica, re reading of data is completed by Informatica, he will Fire this SQL, post SQL. Any questions for me? I see some questions. Okay, what is your question? Is um, so you delete one source qualify and only keep one. Which source qualify you keep? It doesn't matter when you are using in the two. Let's let's go back to this one then. Hold on. No, not this one. Yeah. When I'm using this mapping, yes, I, I'll come back to you. Hold on. So when I'm using this one, where I employees and departments have a primary key foreign key relationship defined in the underlying database, then it doesn't matter which source qualifier you are using. You take any of the source qualifier and, and put the required columns and do the generate SQL. When you do the generate SQL, you, it will automatically create the relationships because it is defined in the underlying database. Okay. For pre-SQL and can you have update insert delete pre-SQL? 
Yes, yes, I am coming to that. Why do we save the results of P okay, Hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. I, I, I'm coming to pre-sql and post-sql. So, pre-sql, post-sql is not, so, okay, let's think of a real-time scenario, okay. I have a performance issue. Uh, this mapping is taking too long uh, to read the data. I don't know what to do, uh, but maybe I'm capturing, I want to capture the read start reading time and end reading time to into some audit table. So I have audit table where I want to capture the start read time and end read time. So what I will write is, I will write something like this, okay. In pre-sql maybe I will write something like this, insert into some audit table, let's say AUD underscore EMP, okay. Uh, insert into table some values then you will do select sys date from dual something like this so insert into table name I, here I think you have to give some column name. So let's just start time. Okay. So if I write this, so what it will do is even if, even before reading started started reading the data, means it, even before it fires this query, even before Informatica fires this query to my database, he will fire this query. So as soon as this query is fired, he will insert the system date time into my audit table AUD underscore EMP. Similarly, I can write another query which is PostSQL. Got it? Any questions? Let me see. Some guys have some questions. Okay. Uh, Swati, does this answer your question? This is example explains everything. You have any? Okay, I can have insert, update, delete in pre-sql, post-sql, every everywhere. Doesn't like I can have any any sql here. I cannot. Uh, the only thing I cannot have here is I think. Uh, uh, even I think I can uh, write a DDL also create table. Like I want to write, run. A, I want to create a table, temporary table, before it starts reading the data, and then maybe I want to drop that table after it's read data is read. I can even do that. So you don't have to save the results because this query is in this query you are inserting data into some other table, so the data will be automatically inserted to that table. Any other question regarding pre-sql, post-sql? You know, okay. If you do not have any other question, then if uh, go back. So this is more or less your source qualified transformation. So source qualified transformation is very very important transformation. And uh, in real world, when you go to the source qualified transformation, many of the times you will see a lot of complex queries are there. So now you know why they are written. So if I go to my assignment list. If I go to my assignment list, what I want you to do is, yes, you can truncate the table in pre-sql or post-sql, but definitely will not truncate the source table, right? Maybe some other table you will truncate. Mm, okay, assignment number eight and nine. Assignment number eight and nine, I want you to do now using one source qualifier. If you have already done the assignment number eight and nine, uh, first will be you're doing the assignment eight and nine using joiner transformation. 
if you successfully do this, then I want you to do the same assignment using only one source qualifier. So you have to write your custom SQL there. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Have you done the assignment where I asked you to create a table in your database and load the data into that table? If no, then make sure you do it before the next class because next class as I will show something where we will need a table. Okay. Okay, that's good. So, the next class I will show you the, that thing. Today I will show you a few other things. We will not see any more new transformation. I think you need some time to practice those transformations. So, today I will tell you a few of the other things. So, uh, until now we have seen, we know what is source analyzer, we know what is target designer, we know what is mapping designer. We have never used the transformation developer. No. Until now, whatever transformations we have used, those are non-reusable transformation. What does that mean is whatever transformation I, am, I have created here, I can use it in this mapping only. If I have to use it in some other mapping, what I was doing is I was copying it and pasting it in the other mapping and I was using it. The other way to do it is make this transformation as reusable. So if you make this transformation as reusable, you cannot revert it back as non-reusable. Okay? So when I make this transformation as reusable and click OK, in the transformation folder you will see this transformation will show up. Now the beauty is if I use any mapping and want to use this transformation, I can drag and drop. So that way this transformation becomes reusable. Now, whenever I want to do any change in this transformation, that will have an effect in all the places wherever it is used. Okay. So, um, so if you see here, now it will show as a Sorry, everywhere it's not used. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let me bring the same transformation, I think. Yes. Okay, so if you look here, so now this is my reusable transformation, right? If you look here, you can see I cannot do any change in this transformation for this specific mapping. See, everything is disabled. I cannot do any change here. If you go here, it says expression reusable. So now, what I have to do is, let's say I want to add one more port. So I will go to the transformation developer. I will bring this one here. And let's say I want to add one more port here. That's a new field. When I go back to this mapping, it will show that, OK, one new port is added. So the bottom line is, Whatever changes I do, do in this transformation, it has, those changes will be reflected in every place wherever it is 
transformation is used. So now the, what is the purpose of this transformation designer? The purpose of this transformation designer is, oh sorry, oh, I deleted it. So the purpose of this transformation designer is until now we have seen in the mapping designer we create the transformations, right? Now instead of creating the transformations in mapping designer, if I create a transformation in transformation designer, those transformations are by default usable. So for example, if I create a transformation EXP1, that is by default reusable. See, it appeared in this transformation folder. So the purpose of this transformation developer is first of all is to create the uh, uh, reusable transformations. Next one is to edit the reusable transformations. Any questions? So wh when do we use this usable transformations. So many of the, the times when I have a same, same functionality I want to use multiple times in different mappings. For example, very good example and it's a real time example. Whenever we use a flat file, we use L trim, R trim for each column. Okay, because in flat file many of the times they come with spaces so what I will do is I will create a reusable transformation where I will L trim R trim the data and then I will proceed and do the rest of the things. So in the transformation designer I will create something like this. So let's uh, let's rename this. Let's give a proper name. So exp underscore trim underscore spaces. Yes, uh, yes, timing and format changes is also a good example. If I, if I have a standard time format used throughout my, let's say, a project, then maybe I will use that one. So here, what I'm going to do is, I don't know because uh, only thing I know is if the flat file, if I get a source of the flat file, I'll L trim R trim, that's it. So what I'm going to do is, and I don't know the field names, right? So what I'm going to do is, let's say, I'll write something like this column sorry column one underscore in okay copy paste 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 so let's do it for these many columns oh, let's make this okay now so these are my input ports and I'll, I'll create one output port here. Okay, so I got, uh, I created a generic 
exp expression which is uh, which only L trim R trim the column. So if I have to use it, I will just bring it here. I I don't know what columns because different files will have different columns. So I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'll L trim R trim these many columns, and then I'll connect them to here. Uh, trim does it does uh, trim L trim R trims both? Uh, like I'm not sure whether it trims both left and right or not. If it does, then we are good with trim also. Okay, that's good then. So see, this is what. So that's the whole purpose of a reusable transformation. So if you want, if you know a similar functionality will be reused multiple times in different and um, mappings, then you can create reusable transformations and you can keep using it in multiple mappings. Any questions for me? No. Okay. So this is one thing. I want to show you the maplet designer, but that will be I think too much for today. Pre post usually pre I cannot send you the sequels, but pre post sequel examples is I can send you some examples, but and that pre-sql, post-sql are very specific to the requirements. It's not necessary that you will be using pre-sql and post-sql for every mapping. If it has a requirement, then only we will use it. But if you want, I can send you some examples. Like uh, examples in different situations where you have to write pre-sql or post-sql. Will that work? Uh, yes, Vidya, you can go ahead. My class is almost end, so you can go ahead. So what is the question regarding the now? Um, in the in the target uh, definition, there is an option to say not now. Target definitions. Uh, like while we are defining the ports for target, the target Here design. Is in the target designer. Oh, target designer, sorry. Oh, okay. In the target designer, in the columns, like there is an option to say not null. Oh, okay, not null. Yeah, that I, I, I will come to that because until now we have seen the target as a path file. Okay. okay. When we see the target as a um, um, database type, yes, okay. table, then only these things. Okay. Things are make more sense because if I see let's say it's for sequence number if I use not null and and if Informatica is trying to send the null then those those specific record will be rejected. But usually for flat files we don't use this not nulls and not a key. This thing doesn't make sense much. Yeah, uh, the reason I what we are trying to do was uh, use this column. And get rid of nulls in the in the assignment one. So that's why I was uh, I was looking at the properties of uh, in the target design. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No problem. So I'll I'll go through these things when I'll use target as a table, and that is what I'm going to do then in the next class. I will use target as a table, and we'll see update strategy and a few other things. Okay. Uh, truncate or update the target. Yes, that is there is an option. You can where you can tr truncate the table, but that is um, okay. Uh, that is when you are using target as a table. That thing also I will show you when I'm and I'll use target as a table. So what are what is this question? Is truncate table option? Yes. Yes. Whenever whenever we are we can we are using 
target as a table, we can do a truncate and reload. I will tell you what are the situations when you use truncate and reload staging table and all those things I will come later on. Uh, once I start using the target as a table, then I will tell you all those things. Okay, so uh, let me just make a note. 